A materials barge is towed offshore and lengths of pipe are delivered to the lay barge Java constructor for unloading on deck and for ready use. Pipe lengths come in at 30 foot and is with or without weight coat as required. The Stinger is a buoyant latticework pontoon that supports the pipeline as it's being laid from the stern of the lay barge. The pipeline is fed through the Stinger and travels over the roller beds to ease its passage. Depending on the diameter of the pipe and the depth of water it is being laid in determines the amount of sections the Stinger comprises of and the angle of deployment the pipeline is laid. The stinger shown in this film is a single section stinger. Before pipe laying operations begin, the stinger is lifted off the deck of the Java constructor and secured to the stern of the lay barge by what is known as the hitch that has hydraulic retaining pins on board the barge to keep it in place on the hitch. After that the lifting straps are removed, therefore the big rig crane is free for use in other lifting operations. A flange is welded onto the end of the pipeline that will accommodate the pulling head. The pulling head will be bolted onto the pipeline end flange and a bolt tensioning procedure ensures that the pulling head is secured in place. The AX ring is the gasket that maintains the seal between the pipeline flange and the pulling head flange. The AX ring is inserted and the flange face bolted up. Pipeline and pulling head flanges faces bolted up. All slack removed from bolts with the use of the flogging spanners. Hydraulic jacks. To accommodate the hydraulic jacks an extended portion of the stud bolt is required to pass through the hexagon nut and the hydraulic jack is placed over the bolt to be tightened. Reaction nut. The reaction nut is then screwed onto the portion of stud bolt protruding through the hydraulic jack. When brought into contact with the hydraulic jack the reaction nut retains the hydraulic jack on the bolt. Hydraulic whips are connected to the hydraulic jack in a ring main circuit and are in turn connected to a hydraulic pump unit and oil is pumped at high pressure into the hydraulic jacks. The hydraulic pump. The hydraulic jacks push against the flange face and the reaction nut and since the reaction nut is screwed onto the bolt all the resultant load is transferred to the bolt stretching it actually. As the bolt is stretched the hexagon nut lifts from the flange manually with zero torque. By applying a tommy bar through the slot in the bridge of the hydraulic jack into the purpose-built aperture in the nut 
the nut can be run down to make contact with the flange face. The pressure is released from the hydraulic jacks and the load is retained in the bolt by the nut being hard up against the flange face. Vernier gauge readings are taken at the cardinal points of the flange faces to prove even spacing of the flange faces all round. DMA or the dead man's anchor is a means of ensuring that the pulling head is laid down in its target box area of 5 meters long and 5 meters wide. The DMA is a single 7.5 ton Stev Shark anchor attached to the pulling head by 3 times 52 millimeter diameter wire ropes that total a length of 980 meters with a proof tension load of 50 tons. While laying pipe it is possible with the grip of the tensioning machine and the pull of the barge anchors to pull the pipeline along the seabed after two kilometers of pipe being laid down from touchdown. The DMA prevents this from happening. Once the DMA is in place and attached to the pulling head, the pulling head is ready to be launched through the stinger and eventually make touchdown on the seabed, as can be seen by this remote operated vehicle film footage. Lengths of pipeline are stowed on the upper deck and are transferred to the ready rack as required for welding preparation. Each section of pipe comes in 10 meter sections and in the ready rack each end of the pipe is prepared for welding. The ends of the pipe are cleaned and beveled and when the two ends of the pipe are welded together this is known as a field joint. The red circular brush does a pull through sweep for fire hazardous materials. The pipe enters the transfer station and waits to be transferred to station 1 for pipeline alignment prior to welding the field joint together. The pipeline enters station 1 for alignment for the first field joint weld, known as the root weld. The alignment machine that has adjustment points every 45 degrees for the end of both sections of pipe to adjust them to perfect alignment for welding together. The root weld is done by welding method known as surface tension transfer and the second pass and subsequent welds are done by flux core welding. The surface tension transfer welding box paying out welding cable. The first pass known as the root weld. Cleaning the root weld and preparing for the second pass to be welded by the flux core welding technique. After the root weld is finished all second and subsequent welds around the circumference of the field joint are done in sections 2 and 4 in the pipeline welding tunnel. Field joint welds are inspected by x-ray and a lead cover known as the doghouse is put over the field joint for protection from the radiograph process. Anodes on standby to be welded onto the pipeline. Sacrificial anodes are used to protect the pipeline from corrosion known as sacrificial anodes because the material they are made from is less noble than the metal that the pipeline is made of. Therefore the oxygen in the seawater is attracted to the anode and the anode corrodes instead of the pipeline. This is how the pipeline is protected from corrosion. Magnetic Particle Inspection MPI 
of the anode to pipeline weld to ensure that there are no surface cracks in the weld holding the anode onto the pipeline. The anode welded in place and welds coated in protective paint. To add further protection from direct contact with seawater, the field joint is covered with Canusa CPS heat shrink sleeve wrap. This wrap consists of a thick cross-linked backing coated with a very high shear strength hot melt adhesive. During installation the adhesive melts and flows, filling surface irregularities and providing an excellent bond to the metal field joint. Cooling down the field joint and the Canusa CPS shrink sleeve wrap. In order to maintain position for laying pipe, the laid barge is on an eight point anchor mooring pattern. With the use of eight anchor winches, the lay barge can be moved in a combination of forward, aft, port or starboard. After the pipeline has passed through the various stations to complete the makeup of the field joint, the laid barge moves forward one field joint a distance of 10 meters. This is known as pulling pipe. The operators for the eight anchor winches work in a control room known as the tower. It is from there they can control the paying in and out of the winch wires for their combined and precise positioning of the lay barge. During pulling pipe the forward winches are pulling an approximate load of 20 tons each. The Robway tension monitor measures the load the anchor cable is under and that information is displayed in the tower. The tensioning machine holds the pipeline with a tension of 48 tons and can grip the pipeline with a tension of up to 60 tons. What you are about to hear is the sound of tortured metal. Diving intervention is mainly routine stinger checks that on board the LB Java Constructor were carried out every 12 hours and can consist of, but is not limited to, 1. The continuity of pipeline from the end of the stinger, 2. The depth profile of the stinger, 3. The integrity of the stinger, 4. Passage of pipeline through the stinger. Preparing to dive. Dressing the diver in. Launching the diver. Left surface. Pipeline in the stinger. The lift to surface, example of two section stinger, just when you thought you were alone. The lay down head is the opposite version of the pulling head. That is to say that on the end of the last length of pipe, a pipeline end flange is welded on. As usual, a field joint wrap is applied. The pipeline is then pulled down the welding tunnel to make room for the arrival of the laydown head. At the same time, preparation for bolt tensioning procedure is carried out. The laydown head is lowered through the welding tunnel deck head hatch. 
using the on-deck Manitowoc crawler crane. This is done with the lay-down head entering through the deck head hatch at an angle due to the restricted access. Once through the welding tunnel deck head hatch, the load is transferred onto chain hoists and then the lay-down head is positioned in alignment with the pipeline for flanging up. Bolting the flanges together. Inserting the AX ring. All the bolts are now in place. Hydraulic jacks and reaction nuts in place. Hydraulic whips in place. Hydraulic tightening of the bolts completed and the flange protector in place. Using an arrest and recovery wire, the laydown head is now ready to transit through the stinger under tension at the correct angle until it reaches the sea bed and can be disconnected. At some future date, a construction barge will tie in the respective ends of the pipeline with the use of a spool piece and riser so that it becomes an integral part of an offshore platform.